what's up everyone? This is Julie here. I'd like to welcome you to my Understanding the NatSat presentation. In this brief presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the two goals of the NatSat and the main focus. But before I get started, I'd like to remind you to smash that subscribe button, kick the like button on this video and all of my other videos, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload new content. I'm sure you're already aware of what a NATSAP is. After all, you are an instructor, right? But before I stick my fork into the entree of this presentation, I think it's necessary, even fair, that I offer you an appetizer by defining what the NATSAP is. The Nurse Aid Training and Competency Evaluation Program, or NATSAP, is a program that provides the necessary training to people who want to become either a certified nurse aid, a state tested nurse aid, or a state registered nurse aide, depending on their state of residency. Now this training is specific to each individual state's jurisdiction requirements. And the training is usually outlined by a state's model curriculum, which must be used by the NATSAP along with the reference book of choice. The two goals of the NATSAP are one, for us as instructors to nurture our students with knowledge and give them a good understanding of their role and responsibilities as a nurse aide. Now this knowledge and understanding that we instill in our students gives them a basic foundation. This basic foundation they're able to build upon once they enter into the workforce as a certified nurse aide. The second goal is for us as instructors to prepare our students to the best of our ability for their state certification exam. Keeping those two goals at mind, I want to share with you the main focus of the NATSAP, which is actually one of the goals preparing our students to the best of our ability for their state certification exam. Now this focus as instructors is what we need to remain conscious of throughout each and every training cycle we instruct. Now on this slide, I'm going to jump forward just a tad bit to the Competency Evaluation Program, or CEP. The CEP is your student's state certification exam. Now this exam is broken down into two portions. You have the written knowledge test and the manual skills test. Students have to receive a pass on both portions before they can receive their certification. Now that you have a good understanding of what the NATSAP is, you're familiar with the two goals and the main focus of the NATSAP, and you understand the breakdown of the CEP, I'm going to move forward to the NATSAP categories. Now, the NATSAP is broken down or divided into two categories. You have lecture lab and clinical. Now, with the lecture lab category, I have personally broken this category down into two subcategories. These two subcategories that I've invented, if, if you want to say, is theory, indirect care skills with skills lab and testing with skills lab. And I'll tell you why I broke this category down into these two subcategories. When I do consultations with nurse aid instructors, what I, what I realized was that instead of connecting what is done in real life to how things 
should be done during testing or what is required of the student during testing, the instructor has actually integrated the two or mixed the two together. And this is a big no-no, okay? And I tell you this because doing so will confuse your students, okay? They're not going to know exactly what is required of them for testing. They'll know how to perform certain nursing tasks in real life, but when it comes to testing, they're not quite sure of what they need to do, okay? Because instead of making a connection with the two, the instructor has actually integrated the two together, okay? And the student um, has difficulty trying to separate the two. So that is why I've created these two subcategories for lecture and lab. Now, with the first sub subcategory, uh, the focus is on theory, okay? And with theory, uh, you're, you wanna focus on uh, you know, instilling information into your students with their actual role and responsibility as a nurse aide. This is what your role is in real life. These are your responsibilities in real life, okay? This is what or how you should perform nursing tasks in real life. And you also want to put emphasis on the indirect care skills. And there are five indirect care skills. You have uh, communication, infection control, safety, dignity, and privacy. Those are the five indirect care skills. Now for testing, the evaluator, the, the student, uh, you know, it's sort of hard to explain. Even though they are not scorable they're not written down on paper as being scorable skills. The student is actually being evaluated on these skills as well as their performance on the testable skills, if that's making any sense. And I hope that it is, okay? So you wanna put, during theory, you wanna put emphasis on those indirect care skills. And then during your theory skills lab, this is where you demonstrate to uh, your students and have them re-demonstrate how things are done, how they should perform nursing tasks in real life. Because you know, as well as I do, that the performance of testable skills is not done the same way as the student would be doing it in real life, okay? We all know that. So, why are we why are we integrating uh, you know real life with testing? We should not, okay, we should not. And we can always, okay, we can always agree to disagree. I am telling you what I am seeing and what I am finding, what I'm observing uh, when I go in and I monitor at the instructor's request uh, their class, you know, how they teach and how, uh, their students are responding to their instruction and training and how their students are actually uh, performing um, not only real life skills, but testable skills. And I'm seeing this with a lot of instructors. Um, you know, I may ask a student to uh, perform a testable skill. Uh, a good example is assist with use of bedpan. And they're they're performing that skill as they would perform it in real life. And when I explain to the instructor that, you know, it, they, they have to be able to separate what they do and how they do things in real life to what is required for them or testing, because what's going to happen is when they get into testing, they may perform the skill uh, correctly, and even though they add in a couple of steps, it's not going to, uh, you know, they're not going to be scored on those additional unnecessary steps that they perform to complete that skill. But what's going to happen is that those additional unnecessary steps are going to take away from their time and they're going to end up failing because they did not perform the entire skills exam within the allotted 
amount of time that is required by uh, their authorized administrator, okay? So that is why I have broken this category down into two subcategories. The second subcategory is the testing skills lab. Now, this is where I focus on nothing but the testable skills. This is how you, the student, uh, need to perform this skill in order to receive a first-time pass on the skills portion of your state certification exam. So there's no real life, uh, no real life steps that I uh, demonstrate to my students uh, during the testing skills lab. It's only the required steps that are outlined in their nurse aid candidate handbook. I hope y'all are following me, okay? I hope you're following me. So the theory is real life. This is what this is where we talk about the history of the nurse aid, the nurse uh, the nursing process, communication, infection control, delegation, safety, basic emergencies, your uh, basic nursing skills, the personal care skills that um, the uh, nurse aide is going to perform in real life. This is where we talk about dementia, how to communicate with people with dementia, how to interact with people with dementia or who are confused or has um, any other uh, mental um, mental deficits, okay? This is how you communicate with someone who is deaf, uh, with someone who is blind, with someone who has cognitive impairments, okay? All of that, the theory is real life. This is what you do in real life, okay? Now, remember the two portions of the CEP or the Competency Evaluation Program, which is the state certification exam, okay? Remember those two categories. You have the written knowledge test and the manual skills test. Your written knowledge test is based on the information that you instill in your students during the theory, indirect care skills, with skills lab subcategory of the lecture lab, okay? So this is why I created these subcategories, okay? Your testing, your testing with skills lab um, deals with the manual skills portion of the state certification exam, okay? It's gonna make it easier on you all to differentiate uh, uh, you know, when you're instructing between the two with these subcategories. And in return, your students are going to be able to find it easy to separate the two. Okay. I hope y'all are following me. If you are not following me, please write a comment in the uh, comment section below this video. Okay, so that's the lecture lab category. I have created two subcategories, okay? And this is just for, you know, not my well-being, but for the well-being of my students. So um, I'll be able to um, instruct to them better on, or, or you know, instruct to them in a, in a way where uh, they won't get confused, okay? They won't get confused. Um, so now I'm going to jump down to the clinical category. And the clinical category is when your students uh, participate in their externship um, at whatever teaching site your training program is aligned with, okay? Whoever they have that contract with, um, that's the externship or clinical uh, rotation, okay? Now, during clinical, this is when your students will be able to, uh, you know, experience real life events, situations, and circumstances. This is when they are going to be placing hands on live residents, okay? Not pretend residents, but true residents, okay? They're going to be um, taking in or enhancing the uh, information and knowledge that you instilled in them during the theory, indirect care skills, skills lab, a subcategory of 
lecture lab. Okay, I hope y'all are following me. I hope this doesn't sound too confusing. Again, if it does, uh, don't hesitate to comment, okay, in the comment section below, all right? So you have to, I guess, emphasize to your students uh, about these two, two subcategories, okay? If you are going to use the two subcategories, um, like I said, we can always agree to disagree, but if you are an instructor, who, you know, is scratching your head wondering why, um, you know, you still have a low first time pass rate or you still have a low, you know, overall pass rate or your pass rates are staggering. You know, maybe one class you get a 96% first time pass rate, uh, your second training cycle, uh, you know, you get a 80 something pass rate and then your third training cycle, you know, you get a 90. It's just staggering up and down, up and down, up and down. And there's really no stabilization uh, to your pass rates. OK, if you are that instructor, if you are that instructor who um, has continuous low pass rates, you might want to think about this sab the subcategories, okay, these or, or instructing under these two subcategories. Also, if you're an instructor who, you know, you may have a 90 to 95 percent pass rate one training cycle after the next, but you're not receiving a hundred percent first time pass rate, you may want to rethink um, using these subcategories, okay. Um, and always listen to your students, okay? Listen to your students because they will give you um, information that could actually help you with, um, you know, your teaching strategies. And I always tell instructors, you know, it's easier for us as instructors to change the way we teach, okay? Or to add in to our teaching strategies rather than us trying to change that student's learning, uh, you know, their learning uh, strategies or, you know, the way they learn. Um, it's easier for us to change how we teach, okay? And always keep in mind, you always want to keep in mind that your students' performance is a reflection, okay? I'm going to repeat that. It is a reflection of your instruction and your training and your leadership, okay? Your students' performance is a reflection of your training, your instruction, and your leadership. So if you have a low pass rate, okay, and it's, you know, one training cycle after the next, or if you are sustaining like at a 90% uh, first time pass rate, uh, you don't want to look at your students. Stop looking at your students. Okay, take out that mirror, pull out your mirror and look at yourself as an instructor and look at your your teaching strategies, how you're teaching and what you're teaching. Okay. Um, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to uh, degrade anyone or say anyone is a bad instructor, right? Uh, because there's, you know, they're they're really they're, they're, or, you're, or you're instructing wrong. There are good instructors and there are bad instructors, but is there a right way and a wrong way uh, to teach or to instruct or to train? Not really, not necessarily, but there are good ways and there are bad ways, okay? So you want to, you want to, you know, look at yourself. You want to listen to your students um, because you can find out a lot. A lot of my teaching strategies that I have developed and incorporated um, in my training, my students actually came from just listening to my students. What would help them? What would make training easy, you know, easier for them? Okay. So those are just some things that you want to think about. Okay. And again, these two subcategories under lecture lab, um, I think will actually, you know, help help those instructors who are having some difficulty or wondering why uh, they're not getting the results that they want to get. And then again, 
always remembering, and I teach by this, I teach by this philosophy that, you know, your, your students' performance is a reflection of your training, instruction, and leadership, okay? So keep that in mind every time you walk into your class uh, to teach, all right? So what did we go over? Okay, what did we go over in this brief presentation? Uh, you now know the definition of the NATSAP. You now are familiar with the two goals of the NATSAP. Basically, that's giving our students a basic foundation to build upon, okay, once they enter into the workforce as a certified nurse aide, and also to prep them for their state certification exam. The main focus of the NATSAP that we have to remain conscious of as instructors is preparing our students for their state certification exam, okay? That's what it is. Uh, you know, the two portions of the CEP, the written knowledge test and the manual skills test. Um, you're, you became familiar with uh, the breakdown or the division of uh, the categories in an ATSAP, which is lecture lab and then clinical. And then I just introduced to you uh, the two subcategories that I created. Um, to go, you know, to integrate with how I instruct and train my students, okay? So you may want to think about that, okay? I'm just saying you may want to think about that, okay? And, um, or you can even, you know, create your own subcategories, okay? You don't have to use the subcategories I created, but you can take these, okay, put a twist to it to make it your own, okay? Or, or just, you know all in all, create your own. All right. So, hey, guys, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to get ready to end this presentation. Uh, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I know I've been a little slow with uploading videos. I was just trying to wait uh, till I got like about 20 subscribers before I started dropping more videos. And right now I am so happy to say that I am at 24 subscribers. I want this channel to grow. I want it to explode, to get huge, to become enormous uh, like my uh, original channel. Um, because I think this is a way for us to connect as nurse aid instructors, okay? There's really not a forum for nurse aid instructors out there anywhere. And trust me, I've checked, I've looked everywhere. Uh, so this is the place that I want to become our nook, our meeting place, okay? Um, so, hey, thank you so much. Uh, before I leave, I just want to uh, give you my business email address so you can have to connect with me if you have any questions or comments. You can reach me at juliereynolds at natsapconsultant.com. That is my business email address. Hey, I want you to visit my other channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Julie Reynolds Natsap Consultant. When you visit, subscribe. I'm going to tell you, um, if you really want to know how students feel um, about you or, uh, you know, not you specifically, but as an instructor, uh, go to that channel and subscribe, okay? Because I'm telling you, a lot of these comments uh, that I'm receiving from, you know, students all around the world, internationally, right? Um, it's, it's like a shock. Really, it's like a shock. And um, it just, just go to that channel, okay, and subscribe, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? It leaves me to question what is up with their instructor? Okay, what is up with their instructor? What is their instructor teaching them or what are they not teaching them? Okay, so please go to that channel and subscribe to it. Hey, if you know any other instructors, whether they're a NATSAP instructor or any other uh, health healthcare, uh, you know, training or instructor, get them to subscribe to this channel. Okay. Again, let's make it, let's make this channel explode. Hey, you can also join my community on Facebook at www 
facebook.com slash NatSAP instructor. I think I have about 185 followers um, on that page. Um, like with my YouTube channel, I want it to explode. Uh, so go there uh, and start following me um, in my or on my Facebook community. And then visit my Etsy storefront at www.etsy.com slash shop slash smash fads. I actually have my uh, unpublished version of my smash that CNA exam book. Um, I now have it in digital format. Uh, so once you purchase it, uh, it's available for immediate download. It is in PDF format. However, you can download it on your smartphone, on your laptop, on your tablet, uh, you know, wherever you want to download it, you can download it, okay? And you can actually integrate this uh, into uh, your training. You can take information out of that book and, uh, you know, train your students on it, okay? It gives you a lot of good information, in-depth information, um, you know, regarding testing and what the uh, NAE or nurse aide examiner or evaluator, whatever you want to call them, um, expects of the nurse aide. Um, I get down and dirty with each individual testable skill, uh, you know, just breaking it down for them. I have an 80 question test prep on there uh, with, uh, you know, questions that are exact to the questions. Um, on the state certification exam or very similar to. Um, I have the uh, uh, manual skills time study, um, also a supplies list. So it's really filled with a lot of resources and a lot of information, okay? Hey, as I did in the beginning, I'm going to remind y'all in the end to smash that subscribe button, kick the like button on this video and all of my other videos. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content. I promise you, I'm gonna uh, be dropping a lot more videos on this, uh, on this YouTube channel. You do not wanna miss, okay? You do not wanna miss. So once you finish watching this, please go to my other YouTube channel and subscribe uh, hook or, or you know, reach out to me or connect with me on Facebook. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn um, and then visit my Etsy storefront, okay? If you have any questions, please comment below or you can email me at my email address, all right? Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and I look forward to dropping more videos for you. Ciao.